So, go ahead, give up. Tourniquet hurts. Did y'all hear that somewhere else before? Yeah. The tourniquet hurts. Y'all know it from doing this in your scenarios. Can be applied over clothing. You don't have to remove clothing. You can go right over clothing. Uh, if you place that first tourniquet and initially the bleeding has stopped and then you move the patient and the bleeding restarts, how do we address that? You can reassess. What we reassess is bleeding. Okay. So where do we go from there? Oh, remove the tourniquet. How many of y'all remove the tourniquet? No, no, no. I'll find another tourniquet. I'll find another tourniquet. I got the answer right there. That first one fails. If you have another commercial tourniquet, apply that one. What if you don't? Make a note. Improvise. Thank you, sir. So can you, I want you to improvise a tourniquet me from what I give you. You can use it, absolutely. So the, this also comes in my kits, um, and this is something that a Marsoc Ranger taught me. So if you're on the Marsoc Ranger, they're Marine Special Ops Medics. Um, they are in the thick of it. They were in OIF and OEF. They've seen it all. Yes. What was the ring you put on there? What's a key ring? It's a key ring. Easy, easy. Everybody's got key rings on there. You know, keys. Hopefully, if you don't, they're very cheap to get. This is a six-inch bolt that I got from Home Depot. Uh, about twenty-four cents. Oh, you just gave me everything to work with. Right. I want to see if he can figure it out. Yeah. I think they need to be course, Of course, you would tighten it. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> And then take the excess and either tie a knot over it, or you can wrap it again and then tie a knot. And it should sit, uh, keep it from running around. And that is a great way to use these as, as kind of uh, leverage. Another way, and the way I like to use them is you can leave them all in there. Can I borrow your arm, sir? Sure. And this, what I'm going to do what's called a surgeon's knot. So I like to go through them one more time and prevent slip. That's a surgeon's knot. I leave the rings out. Bolt here. I'm gonna put it on top and I'm gonna tie it. And I'm gonna use this as my oh, okay. So the difference I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use these to lock my rings. Okay. I'm sure it'll be something different. I never did it the way you said it, but I like that. So thank you for um, giving me another set of alternative. So what if you don't yeah, have it rain? It's quicker that way, too. It is. Um, what, what, um, the Marine Corps showed us that. Gotcha. Well, that's what I'm saying. Marine Raiders taught me that. So <laughs> what what if, you don't, if, you have, if you don't have rings, can you just tie you, and make a knot turn yeah. over, stick that bolt in, and just start turning? Improvise. Yeah. So that's this is improvise. This is not anything that you're going to purchase off the right. internet. Yeah. This is something you're going to find at home and use. So. The way they, 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 they showed us how to take the bandage, make the rope, and use a stick as a tourniquet. That's how it was. That's how it was. So one and a half to two inches, that, that width is very important. You get anything smaller than that, and you will not cause enough compression to stop the bleed. So, uh, but like I said, there are tons of things y'all can do at home. Um, and that might be an exercise y'all do one day. Hey, let's find out what we can use as improvised tourniquets. You go use the bathroom. I'm going to the kitchen. <coughs> come out and meet and say, hey, this is what we got, right? Yes, sir. <coughs> I was just asking, did you address sucking chest wounds or anything like that? Um, yes. I haven't. Uh, usually sucking chest wounds and stuff, I'm going to do in tactical medicine and advanced tactical medicine. So if you're interested in that course, absolutely. Um, flail chest, we go over all of that. Yes. Okay. It's a, a lot more in-depth, and i got to do a lot more anatomy and physiology with that. So. 
it's going to be a little difficult to cover in this one. Uh, but I like the way you think. <coughs> How does this differ from the way we put ours on and it's putting it on the set? Because you pick that up. When you're putting it on someone else, you put it on the orientation that works for you. That's yeah, insane. that's good and hurting them. Now you can call time. You can get all that good time. Oh, right. And then you write your time in order. And then you just start. Yeah. And who takes this off? The yes, surgeon. Yes, so should you use military time or? I think whatever you want to use is fine. Everybody's pretty versed on military time, so you can use the. Get that get all 12, hours. <laughs> now, 12 hours is a problem. Yeah, no, anything past right. seven hours, yeah. you're going to have reperfusion injuries and you're going to have crush injuries to worry about. But if you tell me, Doc, you can live, but you're going to have one arm. Right. I think the one arm. Let me live all day long. Right? So tourniquets, these are all approved by TCCC. Right? These are ones you may find in the community. Uh, with the EMS, with the fire department, what the majority of them you'll see are going to be your cat T and your soft T. Um, I don't like the RMT just because of the width of it. I think it's good for a kid because it's about an inch and it doesn't give you enough compression. Uh, the rest of these are some variation of the cat, but a little more difficult to use. This one has a ratchet and a clip. Um, this one also has a, a ratchet and a clip. So they're just different. Um, the soft tee, I'm going to pass that around so y'all can see that as well. Again, they, it, it'll come apart with this clip. So you can apply it to the leg and then reclip it, satch it down, and then you start with your wings. Right? But if this one is different because it has the C clamp, but you're going to lock it in with this triangle. Right? So it's going to lock in this way. So that's why it's important to, to play with these and know what's in your kit, what's in your stop and bleed kit at work, at home, wherever. The last point I want to make to you about these tourniquets is everybody take your tourniquet and take the windlass. All right, Tex, don't pick that gun up. Okay? <laughs> I want you to take the windlass rod and try to break it. Bend it hard as you can. I don't care if it breaks. If it breaks, it breaks. So, 200 pound Christy could bend that windlass. You think that's a good tourniquet? Wow. No. Where do you think that tourniquet came from? Somebody used it already. Walmart? It's been used a lot, maybe. Hadn't been, it hadn't been used at all? Oh, really? Walmart. Really? 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 Just poor quality. Oh. So, you get a tourniquet from Alibaba, eBay, Amazon, and the tourniquet costs $1.98. That's what, gonna gonna die. That's what you're looking at right here. Okay? Now, can I purposefully give y'all that tourniquet and let you use them? Because I want to make this point that you can buy garbage. Just like you can buy cheap guns and cheap ammo, you can buy garbage tourniquets. So tell me the difference between my black one and your black one. Uh, more substantial. This is more substantial. What else? Looking at this, yeah, I was looking at this. Yeah, there's no embossing on these, right? Right. But on a real Cat 7, you're going to have Cat 7 on there. There'll be embossing. It'll be patent number on there. It'll give you all this information. It's like those N95 masks. Bingo. All right. So these look like the same tournament, right? But they're not. They're not the same. 
So I use these to train and every class falls into the same thing. We're like, oh my God, how can I break this thing? And then I say, try to break this one. When you finish, give it to that big brute in the back and let her break it since she broke another one. Oh, yeah, you see the difference? There are now, out a different type of plastic. So there are six different companies in China right now doing knockoffs of the Pat Sunny. So that's why I want you to be cognizant of where you get your, your equipment from. Right? If they're not an authorized dealer for North American Rescue, you can't trust them. Yeah, North American Rescue is where I get all my gear. They have been, they're ex-military people. Uh, and they have been pushing at the forefront probably since the early 80s to get good equipment out of the I think I'm still right there. Just like you wouldn't buy a high point. Y'all heard of high points? You know what a high point gun is? Yes. One piece of lead, iron thrown out a piece of lead. It's about right. High point is probably the cheapest gun that you'll find on the market and the poorest quality. Also responsible for a lot of self Absolutely. People shoot themselves with high points all the time. It's just a garbage piece of gun. This is a garbage tourniquet. You need to know what a good tourniquet looks like. Um, where's that black one? Can I see that one? With the button bossing on it? Yeah. Did you ever look at it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure so look, there's also, if you look right before the red tip, there's going to be that same thing, right? A printing of Cat 7 tourniquet. Here's all the, the patent numbers and the whole nine. So if you don't have that, it's not legit. So they, they it don't looks have, like it, but it's just... They don't have a rating, uh, like a, a for, for different targets, like, you know, when you go on and go, oh, that's that's a 150 rated, it's like a like thread or tread or something No, like so, so TCCC is going to have um, these five that they recommend, uh -huh. and then they'll have a ton that they don't recommend. Uh, so anything that's not on their recommendation level, I wouldn't even entertain it. Because this stuff has been tried by blood. It's been out in Operation Psyche Freedom, Operation Enduring Freedom. It's been out there. So, uh, yeah, I would, and I always, I always tell my classes this, what is your life worth? Yeah. $32, really, y'all? Right. $1.98, and you're going to spend your life on that? That's crazy. You buy a $600 gun. Why wouldn't you buy just as good a medical equipment? It might make sense to you, it might not. You might be like, well, I don't want a great gun, but I don't need medical equipment. You don't need it until you need it. Right? And it's too late to acquire it at that point. Um, the training as well. So these are all your recommended. Christopher Ryan, you, you can commit these to memory, and if you see them, you can purchase one of them. Okay. Anything else yeah, this time? How long? Let me come in. Let me come in. All right, I got it. So you also see that they have Gen 6 tourniquets up there, right? Cat 7. The way they are different, the, the Gen 6 has a white time tab on it, and the Gen 7s have gray time tabs, right? So this is a new gen. That's right. It's a Gen 7. Every time they come out with a new generation, they make something better on them, whether it's the windlass, whether it's the internal strap. Um, but they have the patent. There was another company that I really liked, and I say liked because they are now going out of business because they copied the cat tourniquet so well that they're getting sued. So the way theirs is different is they have a Kevlar windlass. If you know Kevlar, you're not going to break Kevlar. Because you will never break that windlass. The other reason I like it is they have a pen inside of their windlass. Right? So just their whole, I tested these with a Doppler, they work phenomenally. But I see why they're going out of business because they infringe on somebody's copyright. So I don't recommend recon medical anymore. I used to, they would be on my list. But I use it too. I'll still carry a recon medical too on my belt because I know it's good, I know it works. So 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 they have to on discount then? Now <laughs> eight, ten months ago, uh -huh. they were dumping them on eBay. You could have bought really? cheap, 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 you could have bought packs of these things, uh -huh. right? I'm sorry I didn't do it when that happened because shortly after that they dried up. Once uh, North American Rescue right. put the lawyers on right. That was a wrap. They went through everything. So that company's probably going to go under. If you go on their website right now, it says, we're reorganizing. So yeah. It's called Chapter 11. And yeah. in Trump. Uh -huh. yeah, in North America, the rescue's going to make sure they don't go back into business. I can promise you that. They're going to keep them tied up in, in court. Um, these are all, again, these are not things you're going to be carrying with you because these are pneumatic little tournaments, right? They have air pressure that will cut the stuff off. You need a backpack just to carry one of them. 
So not something I would advise general Joe public to, to carry. But you can carry everything we just talked about on your belt loop and pack that beer. This is an everyday carry. And this is something that every gunfighter or anybody who carries a gun should, should have. The larger packs have more hemostatic agents in them and more EPD dressings. So they're more for your truck, your home. Um, bleeding control in children. We talked about that a little earlier. We talked about the rat tourniquets. Here, here's wonderful. He can use the dog leash then. What's that? He can use the dog's leash. Like, you can use the dog's leash. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not stretched. I mean, this is super kind of yeah. plastic, but yeah, I, was, I, can use it. I was just thinking. You could use okay. that, and then you use a stick or something as a window. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you don't want to use leather belts just because they don't twist and cause they compression in the room. Oh, she has no use for it. So in all but the extremely young child, same terms can be used that we use on, on adults. Uh, for the infant, the very small child, direct pressure. Most of us can generate enough direct pressure, whether it's clamshell, we're here, and clamp on, and we just apply pressure for three to five minutes. That'll stop most bleeding in children. Um, if you have to pack a wound, you can do that. If you feel like they need a turn, you can put one on. I'd rather the ER doc or the surgeon take it off and say it was overkill than for, for the kid. Uh, with a blood volume of probably two and a half liters, three liters at most when they're little, right? Impaled objects. Um, the reason I go over that is because we climb on ladders all the time, we fall off ladders. What if we fall in our garden, there's a stake there, we get impaled. What's the first thing you want to do? Leave it. Yeah, yeah don't take it, it out. out. Don't take it out. Yeah. Call 911, tell the fire department I'm stuck on a stake and pin, whatever, but you do not pull it off because of the same principle we talked about that junction will turn it something called tamponade, which means it applies pressure to that blood vessel and keeps it closed. As soon as you remove that pressure, tamponade is gone. Right? Um, the best story I have for this would be, I'm a fourth year medical student at Charity VR and a dude comes in with a Jim Bowie knife. Mm -hmm. Talking to him, just like, yeah, man, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> what? I don't think I remember I, that. I, I know I was saying that with my mouth open because the ER doc came by and he said, Brian, get moving. Let's go. Let's so go. You were there when that happened. What was that? You were there when that happened. Yeah, they rolled this dude in from EMS with a, a Jim Bowie knife stuck it all the way to the hilt, y'all. And this yeah. dude was still talking. So, it's, a, it's about a six inch blade. I don't have one. I don't have a whip either. I wish I had a kid with this. It's very oh, impressive. Was it oh, I don't know, but I, I uh, talked to the neurosurgeon the next day. He said he had never seen anything like it. He was still That's tall. crazy. So then when they removed the, yeah. he had very minimal damage to the brain along really? that track mm -hmm. and did fine after that. That's which was amazing. Yeah. 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 Of course, that was a fight. Yeah. 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 That shows he ain't have much up there anyway. So, hey. That's the first thing I thought. You couldn't have too many brains, but he didn't get you. So impaled objects we leave in place until EMS comes and cuts it, whether it's a metal object, but leave it in place until you get to the hospital. Oh, that's a um, when, is, when is the only times that you will remove an impaled object? Two times. At the hospital or medical facility. Or you can get them out of a, like, like say the car was burning up or something. Or yeah, if they're impaled in a, in a burning car, that, that's true. What about if, if uh, okay. It's an impaled object in the neck, and their airway's compromised, and I have to well, save have them to with an airway, right? Airway. So I may have to pull that out to get an airway secure. Okay. Uh, but that's that is one of the only times I'll do it. If I have to apply CPR to the chest and have a wound, or if I have to get an airway. But what would you do? Somebody, somebody gets in a car accident. Yep. They got something in plunging their neck. Mm -hmm. Can't breathe. Mm -hmm. What would you do? How would you, what would be like? I would do, as, as a physician, I would do a cricothyrotomy because I'm trained to do that. What yeah. I would suggest you to do is not do that, right? All you can do is kind of maintain pressure and wait for EMS to come with bag valve mask, right? But I'm going to probably crike him and put a pen in there until they can do it. Yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah. Um, Improvised tourniquets, we went over that just now, right? Y'all are going to go home and do that exercise. You take the kitchen, send grandma to the bathroom, bring out something that you can use that improvised thing. That could be a game, maybe you can play with the kids. I don't know. Just challenge each other, right? And figure out what you can use to, to help save somebody. I 
promise not to cut on you. <laughs> I'm gonna say your honor. I don't remember him saying that. So what happens when we have traumatic amputation? Do you expect lots of blood, little blood, no blood? Lots of blood. Lots of blood. Who else is lots of blood? Little blood. Who else? Anybody with little blood? How about no blood? Possibly. 